Sir Francis Galton, FRS, was an English Victorian statistician, progressive, polymath, sociologist, psychologist, anthropologist, eugenicist, tropical explorer, geographer, inventor, meteorologist, protogeneticist and psychometrician. He was knighted in 1909. Galton produced over 340 papers and books. He also created the statistical concept of correlation and widely promoted regression towards the mean. He was the first to apply statistical methods to the study of human differences and inheritance of intelligence, and introduced the use of questionnaires and surveys for collecting data on human communities, which he needed for genealogical and biographical works and for his anthropometric studies. He was a pioneer in eugenics, coining the term itself and the phrase nature versus nurture. His book Hereditary Genius was the first social scientific attempt to study genius and greatness. As an investigator of the human mind, he founded psychometrics and differential psychology and the lexical hypothesis of personality. He devised a method for classifying fingerprints that proved useful in forensic science. He also conducted research on the power of prayer, concluding it had none by its null effects on the longevity of those prayed for. His quest for the scientific principles of diverse phenomena extended even to the optimal method for making tea. As the initiator of scientific meteorology, he devised the first weather map, proposed a theory of anticyclones and was the first to establish a complete record of short-term climatic phenomena on a European scale. He also invented the Galton whistle for testing differential hearing ability. He was Charles Darwin's half-cousin. Early life Galton was born at The Larches, a large house in the Spark Brick area of Birmingham, England, built on the site of Fair Hill, the former home of Joseph Priestley, which the botanist William Withering had renamed. He was Charles Darwin's half-cousin, sharing the common grandparent Erasmus Darwin. His father was Samuel Tertius Galton, son of Samuel, John, Galton. The Galtons were famous and highly successful Quaker gun manufacturers and bankers, while the Darwins were distinguished in medicine and science. He was cousin of Douglas Strutt Galton and half-cousin of Charles Darwin and both families boasted fellows of the Royal Society and members who loved to invent in their spare time. Both Erasmus Darwin and Samuel Galton were founding members of the famous Lunar Society of Birmingham, whose members included Bolton, Watt, Wedgwood, Priestley, Edgeworth, and other distinguished scientists and industrialists. Likewise, both families were known for their literary talent. Erasmus Darwin composed lengthy technical treatises in verse. Galton's Aunt Mary Ann Galton wrote on aesthetics and religion and her notable autobiography detailed the unique environment of her childhood populated by Lunar Society members. Galton was by many accounts a child prodigy. He was reading by the age of two. At age five he knew some Greek, Latin and long division. And by the age of six he had moved on to adult books, including Shakespeare for pleasure, and poetry, which he quoted at length. Later in life, Galton would propose a connection between genius and insanity based on his own experience. He stated, Men who leave their mark on the world are very often those who, being gifted and full of nervous power, are at the same time haunted and driven by a dominant idea, and are therefore within a measurable distance of insanity. Galton attended King Edward School, Birmingham but chafed of the narrow classical curriculum and left at 16. His parents pressed him to enter the medical profession, and he studied for two years at Birmingham General Hospital and King's College London Medical School. He followed this up with mathematical studies at Trinity College, University of Cambridge, from 1840 to early 1844. According to the records of the United Grand Lodge of England, it was in February 1844 that Galton became a Freemason at the so-called Scientific Lodge, held at the Red Lion Inn in Cambridge. 
progressing through the three Masonic degrees as follows. Apprentice, the 5th of February 1844, Fellowcraft, the 11th of March 1844, Master Mason, the 13th of May 1844. A curious note in the record states, Francis Galton Trinity College student, gained his certificate the 13th of March 1845. One of Galton's Masonic certificates from Scientific Lodge can be found among his papers at University College, London. A severe nervous breakdown altered Galton's original intention to try for honours. He elected instead to take a pole BA degree, like his half-cousin Charles Darwin. He then briefly resumed his medical studies. The death of his father in 1844 had left him financially independent but emotionally destitute, and he terminated his medical studies entirely, turning to foreign travel, sport and technical invention. In his early years Galton was an enthusiastic traveller, and made a notable solo trip through Eastern Europe to Constantinople, before going up to Cambridge. In 1845 and 1846 he went to Egypt and travelled down the Nile to Khartoum in the Sudan, and from there to Beirut, Damascus and down the Jordan. In 1850 he joined the Royal Geographical Society, and over the next two years mounted a long and difficult expedition into then little-known southwest Africa. He wrote a successful book on his experience, Narrative of an Explorer in Tropical South Africa. He was awarded the Royal Geographical Society's Founders Gold Medal in 1853 and the Silver Medal of the French Geographical Society for his pioneering cartographic survey of the region. This established his reputation as a geographer and explorer. He proceeded to write the best-selling The Art of Travel, a handbook of practical advice for the Victorian on the move, which went through many editions and is still in print. In January 1853 Galton met Louisa Jane Butler at his neighbor's home and they were married on 1 August 1853. The union of 43 years proved childless. Middle years. Galton was a polymath who made important contributions in many fields of science, including meteorology, statistics, psychology, biology, and criminology. Much of this was influenced by his penchant for counting or measuring. Galton prepared the first weather map published in the Times, now a standard feature in newspapers worldwide. He became very active in the British Association for the Advancement of Science, presenting many papers on a wide variety of topics at its meetings from 1858 to 1899. He was the General Secretary from 1863 to 1867, President of the Geographical Section in 1867 and 1872, and President of the Anthropological Section in 1877 and 1885. He was active on the Council of the Royal Geographical Society for over 40 years, in various committees of the Royal Society and on the Meteorological Council. James McKean Cattell, a student of Wilhelm Wundt who had been reading Galton's articles, decided he wanted to study under him. He eventually built a professional relationship with Galton, measuring subjects and working together on research. In 1888, Galton established her lab in the science galleries of the South Kensington Museum. In Galton's lab, participants could be measured to gain knowledge of their strengths and weaknesses. Galton also used these data for his own research. He would typically charge people a small fee for his services. During this time, Galton wrote a controversial letter to the Times titled Africa for the Chinese, where he argued that the Chinese, as a race capable of high civilization and only temporarily stunted by the recent failures of Chinese dynasties, should be encouraged to immigrate to Africa and displace the supposedly inferior aboriginal blacks, heredity and eugenics. The publication by his cousin Charles Darwin of The Origin of Species in 1859 was an event that changed Galton's life. He came to be gripped by the work, especially the first chapter on variation under domestication, concerning animal breeding. 
Galton devoted much of the rest of his life to exploring variation in human populations and its implications, at which Darwin had only hinted. In so doing, he established a research program which embraced multiple aspects of human variation, from mental characteristics to height, from facial images to fingerprint patterns. This required inventing novel measures of traits, devising a large-scale collection of data using those measures, and in the end, the discovery of new statistical techniques for describing and understanding the data. Galton was interested at first in the question of whether human ability was hereditary, and proposed to count the number of the relatives of various degrees of eminent men. If the qualities were hereditary, he reasoned, there should be more eminent men among the relatives than among the general population. To test this, he invented the methods of historiometry. Galton obtained extensive data from a broad range of biographical sources which he tabulated and compared in various ways. This pioneering work was described in detail in his book Hereditary Genius in 1869. Here he showed, among other things, that the numbers of eminent relatives dropped off when going from the first degree to the second degree relatives, and from the second degree to the third. He took this as evidence of the inheritance of abilities. Galton recognized the limitations of his methods in these two works, and believed the question could be better studied by comparisons of twins. His method envisaged testing to see if twins who were similar at birth diverged in dissimilar environments, and whether twins dissimilar at birth converged when reared in similar environments. He again used the method of questionnaires to gather various sorts of data, which were tabulated and described in a paper The History of Twins in 1875. In so doing he anticipated the modern field of behavior genetics, which relies heavily on twin studies. He concluded that the evidence favored nature rather than nurture. He also proposed adoption studies, including transracial adoption studies, to separate the effects of heredity and environment. Galton recognized that cultural circumstances influence the capability of a civilization's citizens, and their reproductive success. In hereditary genius, he envisaged the situation conducive to resilient and enduring civilization as follows. The best form of civilization in respect to the improvement of the race would be one in which society was not costly, where incomes were chiefly derived from professional sources, and not much through inheritance, where every lad had a chance of showing his abilities, and, if highly gifted, was enabled to achieve a first-class education and entrance into professional life, by the liberal help of the exhibitions and scholarships which he had gained in his early youth, where marriage was held in as high honor as in ancient Jewish times, where the pride of race was encouraged, where the weak could find a welcome in a refuge in celibate monasteries or sisterhoods. And lastly, where the better sort of emigrants and refugees from other lands were invited and welcomed, and their descendants naturalized. Galton invented the term eugenics in 1883 and set down many of his observations and conclusions in a book, Inquiries into Human Faculty and Its Development. He believed that a scheme of marks for family merit should be defined, and early marriage between families of high rank be encouraged by provision of monetary incentives. He pointed out some of the tendencies in British society, such as the late marriages of eminent people and the paucity of their children, which he thought were dysgenic. He advocated encouraging eugenic marriages by supplying able couples with incentives to have children. On 29 October 1901, Galton chose to address eugenic issues when he delivered the second Huxley Lecture at the Royal Anthropological Institute The Eugenics Review. The Journal of the Eugenics Education Society commenced publication in 1909. Galton, the honorary president of the society, wrote the foreword for the first volume. The first International Congress of Eugenics was held in July 1912. Winston Churchill and Carl Elliott were among the attendees. 
empirical test of pangenesis and Lamarckism. Galton conducted wide-ranging inquiries into heredity which led him to challenge Charles Darwin's hypothetical theory of pangenesis. Darwin had proposed as part of this hypothesis that certain particles which he called gemules, moved throughout the body and were also responsible for the inheritance of acquired characteristics. Galton, in consultation with Darwin, set out to see if they were transported in the blood. In a long series of experiments in 1869 to 1871, he transfused the blood between dissimilar breeds of rabbits and examined the features of their offspring. He found no evidence of characters transmitted in the transfused blood. Darwin challenged the validity of Galton's experiment, giving his reasons in an article published in Nature where he wrote, Now, in the chapter on pangenesis in my variation of animals and plants under domestication I have not said one word about the blood, or about any fluid proper to any circulating system. It is, indeed, obvious that the presence of gemules in the blood can form no necessary part of my hypothesis, for I refer in illustration of it to the lowest animals such as the protozoa, which do not possess blood or any vessels, and I refer to plants in which the fluid, when present in the vessels, cannot be considered as true blood, he goes on to admit. Nevertheless, when I first heard of Mr. Galton's experiments, I did not sufficiently reflect on this subject, and saw not the difficulty of believing in the presence of gemules in the blood. Galton explicitly rejected the idea of the inheritance of acquired characteristics, and was an early proponent of hard heredity through selection alone. He came close to rediscovering Mendel's particulate theory of inheritance, but was prevented from making the final breakthrough in this regard because of his focus on continuous, rather than discrete, traits. He went on to found the biometric approach to the study of heredity distinguished by its use of statistical techniques to study continuous traits and population scale aspects of heredity. This approach was later taken up enthusiastically by Carl Pearson and W.F.R. Weldon. Together, they founded the highly influential journal Biometrica in 1901. The statistical techniques that Galton invented and phenomena he established formed the basis of the biometric approach and are now essential tools in all the social sciences.